Hello friends, in this video I'd like to solve the following problem from the Romanian District Mathematical Olympiad for 11th graders 2011, problem number 4. We wish to find all functions f from the compact interval 0, 1 into the set of real numbers, satisfying these two inequalities. The absolute value of x minus y squared less than or equal the absolute value of f of x minus f of y, and this is less than or equal the absolute value of x minus y. For all, real numbers x and y between 0 and 1. It's a nice problem, here are my hints. First, let g of x define a new function g of x to be f of x minus f of 0 and show, express our functional inequalities in terms of this new function g. And notice that we have an additional information about the g, namely g of 0 equals 0. Justify that first, g is continuous and injective, hence it is either strictly increasing or strictly decreasing. It's a fact from mathematical analysis that every injective and continuous function defined over an interval is either strictly increasing or decreasing. Consider both options separately. And then set x to be 1, y to be 0 to find g of 1, set x to be 0 and set then y to be 1, find two estimates for our function g. And of course, do verification in the end. We'll give this problem a try, and I will see you in just a minute. Right, so as I suggested, let's define that g of x be equal f of x minus f of 0. Notice that Notice that g of 0 is 0 and if I call this functional, equa functional inequalities uh, maybe star and star becomes the following. Here I have x minus y squared less than or equal. Instead of f of x, I can put g of x plus f of 0 minus g of y minus f of 0, and this is less than or equal the absolute value of x minus y, which after simplifications becomes the absolute value of g of x minus g of y less than or equal the absolute value of x minus y. So our function g satisfies exactly the same conditions, but we know the initial value of our function, g of 0 is 0. Now I claim two things about my function. Claim number one. Claim number one, g is injective. G is injective. How to prove it? Proof is very simple. Suppose. Let's suppose that f of x equals f of y or some real numbers x and 1 between 0 and 1 sorry then i will use it's probably the only place in my whole reasoning where i will use this first condition notice that the absolute value of x minus y squared is less than or equal uh sorry not f of x but g of x by the way is less than or equal g of x minus g of y but this is zero and Square of the absolute value can be zero if and only if x is equals x equals y, which exactly means that our function is injective. Completes the proof. As I said, this is the only time where I use the first bound. Claim number two. Claim number two, g is continuous. Proof. Proof. Or maybe not the only time. No, sorry, it's not the only time. We'll use it also later. So, proof. Notice I will use this time the second inequality. Notice that... Notice that g of x minus g of y in the absolute value 
we have estimates from two sides. Of course, it's greater than or equal to zero, but it is bounded by x minus y in the absolute value. And what happens when x goes to y? Notice that this converges to zero if x converges to y, which means that g of x converges to g of y as x converges to y. In other words, our function is continuous, which closes the proof of my second claim. And now, immediately, we have a corollary of these two claims. F is, g is either continuous, g is either strictly increasing or decreasing. It's either strictly increasing or strictly decreasing. Yes, well-known facts from mathematical analysis. Pretty easy to visualize it and to prove it. Right. Now, uh, let's take our functional inequalities once again. Or maybe I will, cons yes, I will write them and I will consider two cases separately. I will consider two cases. Case number one, when g is strictly increasing. g is strictly increasing. Well, notice that I will set, maybe I will write it in the following way. Then this asterisk, asterisk, can be written in this equivalent way. For every two numbers, x, y, but x is less than or equal to y, uh, well, y minus x squared is less than or equal g of y minus g of x, less than or equal y minus x, right. In particular, set x to be 0, y to be 1. What then? Then we have the following two estimates. 1 squared is less than or equal g of 1 minus g of 0, less than or equal 1, but g of 0, as we know it, is 0, which means that g of 1 is less than or equal 1 and greater than or equal 1, so it's just 1. Now, let's set something else. Let's set just x to be 0, and y is any number greater than or equal 0. Then we have the following. Why? Maybe I will only use the second inequality this time. g of y minus g of 0 is less than or equal y minus 0. In other words, g of y is less than or equal y. Finally, let's set x to be any number greater than or equal 0 and let y be equal 1. Then uh, g of 1 minus g of x is less than or equal 1 minus x, but g of 1 is 1, so we have 1 minus g of x is less than or equal 1 minus x, which means that g of x, this time it says that it's greater than or equal x. And now let's combine this inequality with this inequality. They say that Sorry, I need a new page. Of course I do. Right. So maybe I will call them uh, triangle and square. By conditions, triangle and square. Well, F is the identity of the interval 0 and 1. And not f, but g. Yes, because g of x equals x for every real number, x between 0 and 1. Which means, i.e., f, you know what, maybe I will write with arguments, g of x equals x for all x's between 0 and 1, which means that f of x equals 
x plus some constant for all 0 and 1, x is between 0 and 1, where c is some constant. This number c, you can think about it, it is, uh, it is uh, f of 0, yes, it is f of 0. And now, second case, case number 2 is much quicker. Case number 2, when f is strictly decreasing, g rather, g is strictly decreasing. Well, notice that we can then say that minus g is strictly increasing. Yes. And moreover, let's notice that the absolute value of g of x minus g of y equals minus g of x minus minus g of y, which of course means that our function minus g uh, satisfies uh, exactly the same things which were ha which were happening in case number one. So in this case, minus g of x equals x for all x is between 0 and 1 by case number 1. And of course this means that in this case g of x or rather we can write f of x equals c minus x for all numbers between 0 and 1 where c is again any real constant whatsoever. So we have two families of solutions. Solutions, either f of x is c minus x for all x is between 0 and 1, or f of x equals c plus x for all x is between 0 and 1, where c is any real number, any real number. Now, for the sake of completeness, you should do verification. But verification is very easy. Maybe I will write it, why not? Verification, in both cases, in the middle we have the absolute value of f of x minus the absolute value of f of y. Uh, in, the, in both cases, it's either c plus minus x minus c plus minus y. So it is plus minus x minus plus minus y which is x minus y it's because either we have both pluses here and here or both minuses so of course this is less than or equal x minus y but also the absolute value of x minus y is also greater than or equal the absolute value of x minus y squared how do i know it well notice that uh I claim that this is true for all, all numbers from the interval 0, 1. And how to prove it? Well, proof is very simple. Proof, proof is very simple. Proof. Uh, well, if x equals y, then OK. Then nothing to be demonstrated. If x is not equal 1, then this inequality is equivalent to saying that the absolute value of x minus y is less than or equal 1. And remember that this is the distance between numbers x and y. So since x and y are in the interval of length 1, they cannot be distant more than one unit apart. So this holds because the length of 
zero one is one which completes our reasoning we have exactly two families of solutions this function or this function where c is any real parameter very nice problem so thank you very much for watching i hope that you've learned something new this time and i will see you next time goodbye